14.4 adding and subtracting rational expressions with different denominators. We just talked about adding and subtracting rational expressions with the same denominators. And remember that rational expressions are basically fractions, but they contain polynomials in the numerator and or the denominator. So in order to understand or to relate what we're going to do with rational expressions, let's look, look at two fractions first. If we were going to add these two fractions together, what would be the first thing that we need to do? We would need to get a common denominator. So what is the least common denominator between 2 and 3? That means what is the smallest number that both 2 and 3 can divide into evenly? Well, the smallest number that can be divided by 2 and 3 would be 6. So then we ask ourselves, what do we need to multiply 2 by to get 6? It would be 3. And remember, when we're dealing with fractions, whatever we do to one part of the fraction, we have to do to the other part. So since we're multiplying the denominator times 3, we also need to multiply the numerator times 3. So that would give me 3 times 1, which is 3, over 3 times 2, which is 6. Now we need to do the same thing to the 1 -third. What do we need to multiply 3 by to get 6? It would be 2. And we need to do the same thing to the numerator. So that would give me 2 over 6. Now, once we have a common denominator, that's going to be the denominator in my answer. And then we just add or subtract the numerator. 3 plus 2 is 5. And then, of course, if it were not reduced, we would need to reduce it. So in order to add or subtract fractions, we have to have like terms, which means the denominators must be the same, or we have to have an LCD. So in order to get a least common denominator, first we need to factor the denominators as far as we can. Then find the maximum number of times each factor occurs in each term. And that's going to be our least common denominator. So let's look at number one. And we're not going to add or subtract yet. We're just going to find the least common denominators. So in number one, when we're looking, let's break it down between the numbers and the um, variables because those are separate factors. Between four and two, what would be the least common denominator or the smallest number that each term can divide into? Well, you always want to look at the biggest number and see if the smaller number can divide into it. And 2 can divide into 4, so 4 would be part of my least common denominator. And then, like I said, we need to see the maximum number of times that each factor occurs in each term. Well, x occurs once in this term, but twice in this term. So we're going to use the maximum number of times that it occurs. X occurs twice here, so it's going to be twice. It's going to happen twice in my least common denominator. We can think of it the same way with the numbers. If I factor these, these numbers, 2 times 2 is 4. Those are the factors of 4. And then 2 happens once here. Well, 2 happens twice, or it occurs twice in the first term. It only occurs once in the second term. So we're going to use it twice in our least common denominator. And 2 times 2 is 4. So this, my least common denominator, includes every factor the maximum number of times that it occurs. Let's look at number 2. Like I said, when we're looking at the numbers, we want to see what the biggest number is and then see if the other terms will divide into it. Well, 3 will divide into 6, but 4 won't. So I take my biggest number and double it. And if I double it, I get 12. Well, that is a number that 3 and 4 can both divide into, and of course, 6 can divide into it. So that's the smallest number that all three of these terms can divide into. So that's going to be part of my least common denominator. The other factor that's in all of these terms is a. Well, a only occurs once in the first fraction, or once in the first rational expression, once in the second one, and once in the third. So it's only going to happen once in my least common denominator. 
All right, for number three. Five and three. What is the smallest number that both five and three can divide into? 15. Okay, and then for my y's, I have a y to the third power and a y to the second power. Like I said, we use the maximum number of times that it occurs. So it would be y to the third. Now remember, when something's connected with a plus or a minus, it's connected. We don't separate it. So that goes together, a plus one, we don't, I mean, x plus one. We don't think of the x separately. So x plus one is a factor. Three is a factor. And x is a factor. So all of those things happen once. So it, they all three need to be in our least common denominator. Three, x, x plus one. That's all got to be included in my least common denominator. Number five is not factored, and we need to factor first before we can de determine what the least common denominator is. Since this is a trinomial, we know that trinomials factor into two binomials. In the first two spots, I'm gonna put A. I need the factors of six that would add to give me five. That would be two and three. This tells me my signs are the same. This tells me what they are. They're both plus. If we do our smiley face to check, this would be two A plus three A, which is five A. So I know that that factored. All right, for the 5a plus 15, they have a common denominator of 5. So I'm going to factor out a 5, and then I'm left with a plus 3. So a plus 2 is a factor. It occurs once here, zero times here. So we're going to use it once in our least common denominator. a plus 3 occurs once here and once here, so that's the most it occurs. We're going to use it once in our least common denominator. Then five occurs zero here and once here. So we should we use it once in our least common denominator. So that's my least common denominator. For number six, we're gonna factor the first denominator using difference of perfect squares. That would factor into x plus four, x minus four. In my second denominator, I have a greatest common factor of 2x squared. If I factor out the 2x squared, I'm left with x minus 4. So, in my least common denominator, I see x plus 4 once here, 0 times here. So it shows up once in my least common denominator. x minus 4 happens once here and once here, so we use it once in my least common denominator. 2 shows up once here, 0 times here, so we're going to use it once, and we're also going to use the x squared, 2x squared. So all of this make up my least common denominator. Now, before we add or subtract our least common denominators, we're going to talk about what equivalent fractions would be and how to find them. In order to find an equivalent fraction, first we have to compare um, the parts of the fractions. If I look at these two fractions, I can ask myself, what do I need to multiply three by to get 27? We know that three times nine is 27. So if I just multiply the numerator by the same thing, times nine, I would get 18 and that makes equivalent fractions. I could also take the 27 and divide it by three and say 27 divided by three is nine and then multiply the numerator times nine to get 18. So let's do it that way for number two. I'm gonna take the bigger denominator and divide it by the smaller one. If I divide by eight y squared, eight will go into 32 four times. If I divide um, the numerator by the denominator, I would still have an A left. And then remember for our like 
variables, we would just subtract. So y to the third minus y squared just gives me a y. So if I were to multiply 8y squared times 4ay, that would give me the 32ay to the third. So now I need to multiply this numerator, 5a times the ay, uh, 4ay. So if I multiply those two together, I get 20 a squared y. And that makes these two equivalent fractions. All right, for number three. First, let's factor to see what we have. Um, I have a greatest common factor here of five and then this would leave me with x squared plus three. Here, I have a greatest common factor of 20. If I divide by 20, I'm left with x squared plus three. So you see these two parts are the same. The only thing I would need to do to this to get it to look like this denominator is multiply the five times four. So that means all I need to do is multiply this times four. And that would give me 20y minus four. So this is my equivalent fraction to this. And that's how we get equivalent fractions. Now let's move on to adding and subtracting um, rational expressions with different denominators. So first we need to find the least common denominator between our fractions and in number one the smallest number that both 8 and 2 can divide into would be 8. Remember start with your bigger one and see if the other one can divide into it. And it can. So to get 2 to be 8 I just need to multiply times 4. Alright so that gives me 1 over 8 minus, that would be 4 over 8. So my denominator is 8, and 1 minus 4 is negative 3. That can't be reduced, so that is my um, solution. Okay, for number 2, to get the least common denominator here, remember I would look at the numbers first, and the smallest number would be 12, and they all have an A, so I need to include the A. So then I just ask myself, for each one of these, what do I need to multiply 4A by to get 12A? I would need to multiply times 3, both the numerator and the denominator. All right, what would I need to multiply 2 over 3A by? I would need to multiply times 4. And then the 6a to get 12a, I multiply times 2. Okay, so that would give me 9 over 12a minus 8 over 12a plus 2 over 12a. Alright, remember my denominator stays the same. And then I just add or subtract the numerators. 9 minus 8 is 1, and 1 plus 2 is 3. Now this can be reduced, so we need to reduce any time we can reduce. 3 over 12 would reduce to 1 over 4, and the A stays where it is. All right, for number three. The least common denominator here we found earlier was 15y to the third. So what would I need to multiply 5y to the third by to get 15y to the third? I just need to multiply times three. So that gives me 3x over 15y to the third. 
what do I need to multiply 3y squared by to get 15y to the third? 5y. All right, so that gives me 10y over 15y to the third. So my denominator is 15y to the third. And my numerator, I can't combine these because they're not like terms. So my denominator is just 3x plus 10y. And that is my solution. In number four, I have a denominator of m, and then I have a whole number. Well, remember we can turn whole numbers into fractions by putting them over one. So now I have m and one. Well, if I multiply times one, it doesn't change anything. So my least common denominator, we could say that it's m times one, but m times one is just m. Now to get this, to have a denominator of m, I need to multiply both the numerator and the denominator times m. So that gives me 5 over m minus 7m over m. And when I put that together, my denominator is m. And again, I can't combine those because they're not like terms. So it's just 5 minus 7m. All right, in number five, um, the two is a factor, x is a factor, and x plus one is a factor. So all of that, two, x, x plus one, is my least common denominator. So remember, I ask myself, what do I need to do to this to make it look like my least common denominator? I would need to multiply times x plus 1. I need to do that both to the numerator and the denominator. What do I need to multiply x plus 1 by to make it look like this? 2x. Okay, so that gives me, let me write all this out, 7 times x plus 1 plus 2 times 2x, and all of that is over my denominator, which is my least common denominator, 2x times x plus 1. Okay, so I need to distribute this 7, and that gives me 7x plus 7, and then plus 2 times 2x would be 4x. We don't need to distribute the denominator. All right, in the numerator, we're going to combine like terms, and that would give me 11x plus 7 over 2x times x plus 1, and that is my solution.